No, no, movie. Your star is a 21st century fox. POV shot from the outside of a suburban house at the beginning of a horror movie cliche. Now how am I supposed to be frightened if there's a goddamn horse hanging out in the yard like it's a f***ing dog? Curse it! This is an orgy of evidence that this is a troubled teenager's bedroom. Not only are there weird goth pictures all over the walls and juvenile pink pillowcases, there's a f***ing Fallout Boy poster. That thing knows what she does in the dark. Amanda Spyfriend. Hell is a teenage girl. I mean, you're right, but it's the narration that's the real sin, so that it's going straight to hell. Welcome to Needy's Crafting Corner. In today's video, we're going to unbox some sweet swag sent into the P.O. box this month. Nobody seems to care that the statues can be used as weapons, that the place is in absolute disarray, or that combative murderers get special decorative treatment. Sub and click the bell for more ridiculous content. I guess I'm not exactly perfect myself. But at least I have my fans. Sure, you were great in Mean Girls and Chloe. Really, who could blame you for doing Mamma Mia? Welcome to the Mental Olympics. They're big on recreation here. And slippers. Don't forget that they're big on slippers. Everyone with dialogue has them. You know, for a criminal psychiatric center, the cafeteria options don't look half bad. They've got lemonade, pink lemonade, what looks like orange juice, and at least a healthy balance of protein, fruit, and vegetables. You even get to wear the same thing every day. Spelling blonde without the E. To create the proper sense of hopelessness, the isolation room had to be only 96 square feet, but at least 30 feet tall. I wasn't always this cracked. I used to be normal. You can't fool me, movie. This is totally a you're probably wondering how I got here cliche. Holy sh**. You can catch a double feature of Baby Mama and Forgetting Sarah Marshall at this theater? <laughs> Am I not supposed to love this town? Leaving your mailbox open in a small rural town. Don't you know this is how birds build nests? Or snakes? It goes into this hole, and it doesn't come out. Waterfall Dentata. People found it hard to believe that a babe like Jennifer would associate with a dork like me. God damn it, even the great Diablo Cody can't make this shit believable. Oh yeah, look at Amanda Seyfried. She's so ugly. She's got glasses and a ponytail. Gag me with a spoon. Sandbox love never dies. Sure, till you find out that a neighborhood cat has been using your sandbox as a bathroom and the crusty chunks you thought were in the box because of rain or moisture was actually straight up cat sh And then the love of the sandbox dies. Or this indie rock band from the city. I saw their MySpace page. Yes, the sin could be literally MySpace pages, but remember that it was quaint. It wasn't a place where your great aunt could fire off racist memes and over-buttered recipes. It was for real bands, man! Tits were her trademark. That's... that's not how trademarks work. Needy, quit tampooning yourself and get down here. That's f weird. Damn you, movie, for making me read all 13 definitions of tampoon in order to determine what Jennifer thinks Needy may be doing with her lady cotton. It smells like Thai food in here. Have you guys been f that's racist. You're totally jello. You're lime green jello and you can't even admit it to yourself. I love the empowerment of this movie, but the inside jargon that's instantly dated is honestly just as egregious as swingers. If at any point in this movie viewing experience you doubted the genre, this toilet will confirm for you that it is in fact a horror film. Also, are they insinuating that the bar has one toilet for all? This is disgusting even for a guy who can piss from a foot away and avoid touching almost every surface in this room. But if this is the only toilet, I find it impossible that there would be any female patrons. Two more months. Then I'm on the force for reals. I can't really tell whether it's pre-Parks and wreck Chris Pratt, where he's heavy, or post-Guardians of the Galaxy Chris Pratt when he got ripped. But either way, this sudden Chris Pratt is freaking me out. These are like smart bombs. I mean, if you're looking for something that has an actual ability to explode, you may want to aim a little lower. How are you gonna get alcohol? Uh, I'll just play Hello Teddy with a bartender. Damn. She pegged a female bartender's preferences lightning fast. This girl's definitely a virgin. I, I don't know. Well, you know, we didn't drive all the way out here for nothing. Villains loudly discuss their evil plan with an easy earshot of the protagonist cliche. I'm not even a backdoor virgin anymore thanks to Roman. And by the way, that hurts. Wow, turns out Chris Pratt caused even more cinematic pain than letting Jennifer Lawrence loose in Passengers. Gum chewers. Who does this asshole think he is, an NFL coach? Okay, this is a really good song, so I have to give it to this movie for, like, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World having actually dope music on its soundtrack. Maybe it's the inclusion of Johnny Simmons that makes the magic. Either way, go on and take a sit on, you doubles. I know the band's playing and everything, but no one notices this fire until it's literally raining on top of them. What the f*** is this sign? No ID required in a bar? Is that legal? I'd ask someone, but all these people are about to die, so... At what point did Jennifer succumb to the band's spell? During the song? Then why wasn't everyone in the bar under the spell, like that scene in Hocus Pocus? This f***ing guy survives until the very end of the movie. This f***ing guy. Also, the band seemed generally bemused about the giant fire in the bar. Did they start it? If so, why? If not, why are they completely unconcerned about themselves and their gear? Leaving your cell phone at home! Seriously guys, even in 2009 this wasn't a thing. I'm not dismissing the general trauma, but Needy didn't hear sh**. She ran out the bathroom with Jennifer shortly after the fire started, and had the powwow with OC in the parking lot. 
Did you get the make and model? I don't know, Chip, an 89 rapist. Why the hell did you call Chip if you're not going to accept his help? You could at least describe the van instead of resorting to sarcasm. How the hell did Jennifer make it all the way over here? Needy just got home and just talked to Chip, and she left around the same time as the van that took Jennifer. So the van had time to go out in the middle of nowhere, perform the satanic ritual, then Jennifer had time not only to make it all the way out to Needy's house, she stopped to eat along the way? I know she's a succubus, but she ain't the Flash. Mom got that at Boston Market. Boston Market. How have you not called for an ambulance before now? Sure, she looks creepy, but she's also covered in goddamn blood and puking black sentient material. What kind of friend is this? Also, let me say that this part of the movie is legitimately creepy, and the chemistry between the leads makes this thing super rewatchable. Take us in back, dammit! Are you scared? Is this really something a succubus would ask? Is she like Pennywise, where people taste better when they're frightened? Why do I have to be Ugly Ashley? Kids. People are like, oh, look, they've cared for each other for so long, and I'm all like, ooh, she's kissing kid blood and loving it. Tell my mom about this. She made me a shot. I never tell on you. This movie plays with the theme that the power dynamic of friendships made in the sandbox years will define the relationship forever. I don't mind this. I had friendships similar to this and it feels very real. But if my sandbox pal showed up covered in blood yakking tar, I would talk to an adult because that's not telling on someone, that's saving someone's life. I understand Jennifer has had to put on appearances to be able to properly feed, but why would she go back to f school? Would a succubus seriously sit through a second period biology class? I knew it was real. I'd been up all night scrubbing the carnage off the linoleum. Rather than say pursuing my best friend, who's covered in blood by the way, that just walked out of my house after stealing my food and horked said carnage onto said linoleum to see if she was okay. You know, if the fire were this traumatic, and losing eight students and a teacher definitely would be, why didn't they close the school for the f***ing day? I mean, that stuff happened mere hours ago. Buttoning only this button on this shirt. But she probably just inhaled a whole bunch of smoke or something. Chip's planning. You come with me, just for a little while. It's what Craig would have wanted. I want to sarcastically say this works. I yearn to say it. I pine to say it. Yet I cannot. For this is Megan Fox asking a young man for sex. For the record, though, this comes out of nowhere and should immediately be highly suspicious. But we all know the power of boners is greater than the power of common sense. Pop quiz! Which of these creatures would stick around for a fleshy snack after Jennifer kills her victim? Anyone who chooses the herbivore would be an idiot, but also correct, because f*** this movie. Do you miss Craig? Of course. Well, you're gonna see your buddy really soon. Jeez, why go to all the trouble of removing clothes and jerking this poor bastard off? All she wants to do is feed and they're alone. When I'm sitting down for a nice steak dinner, I don't pause to jerk someone off and take off my shirt. At least if I'm out. Do you want to knock your temple into an old school pencil sharpener? Because this is the perfect placement to do such a thing. And perhaps you deserve it, considering there have to be a hundred better places in the house for a pencil sharpener than the windowsill of the kitchen directly by the table. But one day you're going to be crying out for me and I'm like, I'll be there. This is basically confirming what happened last night, right? So this is backshadowing? My point is, what's the point? Oh look, it's that scene that a million guys and girls whacked off to in the late aughts, but actually contains zero nudity. So here's a sin for all that skinless whacking. See, it makes sense that nobody would catch her because she took a dip in the lake to wash the blood off her body and her clothes are magically resistant to plot holes. I am having the best day since, like, Jesus invented the calendar. If there's a debate to be had about whether or not Jennifer is still human or all demon, it's this moment right here. A demon would never reference Jesus. They're not on good terms. Also, is Jennifer's best friend really not going to straight up ask her what happened last night? Even if she did disregard the whole chicken puke situation, she could ask if there was any trouble with the band, right? Ah, still tastier than anything from Boston Market. Hang on, there are multiple sirens going off right next to this park, and these two are still making out? God damn, this town is horny. Open flames in the school hallway just after a major fire took the lives of 47 people in the town. Seems logical. Today is the one month anniversary of the tragedy at Melody Lane. You know how most actors try an accent at the beginning of a movie that fades over time? J.K. Simmons does the opposite and gets hella Minnesota the longer this movie goes. Another hour and he's gonna be talking about snowblowers and hot dishes. Is everything okay? No. I feel like boo-boo. Hey, why doesn't the movie ever address Jennifer's feelings about the band that murders her? Throughout this scene, as the teacher is singing their praises, she looks like she's thinking about toast. Shouldn't she be furious? Vengeful? Or is she just a demon in a body and Jennifer's gone? In which case, why is the demon acting like Jennifer at all? It's just wearing off or something. Okay, Jennifer killed a met the first night she turned into a succubus, so she should have been well fed for a while. But then she ate Jonas the next day and felt great, so the question is, why the hell did she stop? He's into maggot rock, he wears nail polish. My dick is bigger than his. Why would she care about his interests if she's just needing to kill a terrified male? There are males all over this school that she can prey on. Sure, the movie wants us to feel an awkward growing tension between Needy and Jennifer, but if a demon girl is hungry, then a demon girl would eat. I'll text you my address. But how does she have his number in the first place? 
Also, why is Jennifer into guys that Needy really likes? It's not like an essential feature of a succubus, right? And even if she's trying to break up relationships, there are plenty of others around. Your. Holy shit, this scene suddenly Dutch angles so hard that I nearly lost my balance. Sure, it adds to the ambiance, but why spend this much on the lighting? This love nest is way over candle, especially since it's going to be over in a few seconds. You can play mommy and daddy. Nonsense! Everyone knows parents don't have sex, at least with each other. Damn, this sex montage goes on for some time. I guess I'm not complaining, but it is technically sinful. Why does Nadie feel a disturbance in the Force? I know she and Jen are good friends, but does she seriously know what's happening now? And if so, why didn't it occur to her during the last two murders? I made you hopeless. Damn, I thought my college girlfriend was the only one that said that prior to Cordis. <laughs> Jump scares! Needy, enough with the screaming, you're such a cliche. Get I'm throwing the flag on this unnecessarily quippy dialogue. Yes, she has been screaming too much tonight. But you also snuck into her bedroom and surprised her as she was trying to fall asleep. Follow your own logic, movie. But we always share your bed when we have slumber parties. Do you also share showers? No, no, not for that reason. Pervs. Presumably Jennifer has broken into Needy's house and cleaned up instead of, you know, gone home to dispose of evidence and retrieved her own clothing. Why is Jennifer there at all? Pause for fan applause. Also, I guess Needy is still randy as hell, but she does remember that she had a vision of blood earlier tonight. And she also saw Jennifer out in the middle of the road looking like a roadkill, right? I have the cops in my back pocket, Needy. I'm f***ing a cadet, remember? I'm not entirely sure this is how you get the cops in your back pocket. Also, Evil Dead poster in the background is extremely relevant to the movie. But is Needy the type of girl to have that on the walls of her bedroom? I think not. And those guys from Low Shoulder? Totally evil. And yet I decided to tell you this much later than I normally would have. We had a waxing moon tonight, you guys. <laughs> Just like the ritual said. I would hope so. Did they not know this before they started this abduction? I know they're a shitty indie band, but it would be extra shitty if they waited until it was like waning or something. Do you want to work at Moose Hoof Coffee forever? I mean, stop right there. I was struggling with the plot line to kill a virgin to become the famous musician. Uh, I can totally understand this new development. Working at Moose Hoof. Do you know how hard it is to make it as an indie band these days? These days? Isn't the definition of an indie band the lack of opportunities to make it? Jenny, I've got your number! Sure, everything is laughs now, but half these motherfuckers were super hesitant about doing this shit about two seconds ago. We are gathered here to celebrate the life of Colin Gray. Damn, how long has it been since Jennifer killed this sucker? Did Needy really not feel the need to report Jen to the authorities in the meantime? Are they even investigating? There has to be evidence somewhere. She has at least three sets of blood-soaked clothes, and the mop Nady used earlier is forever ruined with demon squirts. So I did some research. Paranormal research. Oh, so I can't find a copy of The Adventures of Super Diaper Baby in my library, but books on the occult and satanic witchcraft are super easy to check out? But a blade to the heart. A blade to the heart is the surest way to kill the beast. Or really anyone, right? Did you make reservations at the Cheesecake Factory? Excuse me, what? A cheesecake factory in a town of 7,036 people? A quick search shows the nearest cheesecake factory is five hours away in a town called Minnetonka. But they didn't open the restaurant until 2017. So who knows how far these dumb kids would have to drive to eat at a goddamn cheesecake factory and get back to prom on time. The dance. It'll be like an all-you-can-eat buffet. I'm sorry, but this demon girl has been attending school every day surrounded by boys. How is the dance different? Because there are suddenly more choices that she can see all at once? She's been discreet with each murder. Hell, nobody even found a met. Chip, it's not safe for us to be together right now. Makes sense. Send the person you care about far away from you rather than keeping him close. Here's an idea. Get in a car and drive 17 hours to the nearest cheesecake factory for the night. Oh yeah, remember Needy's mom? Movie wastes a perfectly good Amy Sedaris by including her in roughly three total seconds of screen time. Yeesh. I mean, maybe if you get this upset putting on makeup, just don't wear it. Also, using your hands to apply your foundation isn't advised. I don't have to know anything about makeup application to tell you that succubus hands are swimming with bacteria. Here's a baffling scene where Chip walks to the dance despite the town being terrorized by a murderer. This kid's mom handed him pepper spray and was all, Have a great time walking three miles through a dark-ass park, son. She and Colin were doing things that you have never even heard of. Okay, total varsity moves. Dude, he's a teenager with an internet connection. Ain't no move he hasn't heard of. He may be basic in the bedroom, but trust me, he's well-educated. Let's talk about Needy's plan. She breaks up with Chip to protect him, but doesn't check in on him the night of the prom to make sure he's not going. Then she gets all dolled up in this ridiculous dress, not regular clothes, because she wants to keep an eye on Jennifer. But she doesn't even track her to make sure she actually comes to prom. So instead, Needy's been sucking down punch, watching the band and doing jack f***ing sh** while her erstwhile boyfriend gets succubus Not only did Needy get the force disturbance again, she knows exactly where to go to catch Jennifer in the act. I have so many questions about this scene. One, how is there any water in this pool? 
Two, Chip and Jennifer use the door, but after this, anyone coming or going opts for the branchy root slides coming from the windows. Why? They don't lock the door to keep anyone out. It's just avoided from here on out. Three, why is there any electricity to this building? What dumbass is paying the bills for this place to receive juice? I mean, unless roots grow at an alarming pace, this pool hasn't seen maintenance for at least 10 years. Four, last but not least, no matter your boner, would you want to f in a dank and mossy sh hole like this? I'm saying if you f on a beach, there's sand everywhere. F in a cesspool, and it's the same thing, but with microorganisms. Wait, so Needy took the time to pick up her sweater before she left the dance, but is now throwing that shit away? Okay, I don't mean to be a drag here, but why isn't he dead? Everyone else got the gut them open after 10 seconds treatment. Is she playing with her food? Needy hears her boo screaming all the f***ing way up at the pool house, which is just as much bullshit as her happening upon the corsage in the park and knowing that it's hers. <laughs> he chucks her some mace, you know, rather than use it when he's being attacked. Brilliant. You're a jerk. Even when we were little, he used to steal my toys. <laughs> I mean, goddamn, this kid has his neck ripped open and bleeding and his girlfriend is throwing insults rather than, oh, I don't know, wrapping his neck or helping him out of the pool. Is this supposed to be funny? This is funny, right? Look, how could I ever be insecure? I was the snowflake queen. This dialogue is pretty hilarious, but also the succubus has time for this. Isn't she in the middle of a f***ing meal? I thought you only murdered boys. I go both ways. Fantastic. So why haven't you murdered any girls yet? I got a tampon. 2020 women are like, we don't need tampons anymore. We have pixie cups and magical underwear made from space material. But I guess I can understand how that sounds less punchy. <laughs> if she says anything besides f***. I forgot to apply pressure to your gaping neck wound. I'm adding 30 cents. <laughs> well, what can I do? I'm a sinner of my word. I think I already died before you got here, but I woke up when I heard your voice. Okay, no need to run and or call for any help then. No! 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 Wait, so Jennifer fed on Chip, traded barbs with Needy, got impaled, and went back home, changed clothes, and got into bed? She's even marking up the yearbook. Why didn't she feed some more if she'd healed from the impaling? I thought the problem was supposed to be the all-you-can-eat buffet! This murderous rampage stops on a dime when Needy grabs the BFF necklace, and I could not skip harder. My dead. No. Your heart. Anatomy lessons! Most occult scholars don't know this, but if you're bitten by a demon, and you live, you just might absorb some of the demon's abilities. And yet, Nady hasn't used any of these abilities until this very moment. Also, how do most occult scholars not know this? This should be taught in, like, the third day of occult class. I'm following this rock band. Tonight's gonna be their last show. Yeah, we get it. You didn't have to slap us in the face with a sign. Signing skin instead of swag. Ew, no, David. Hey, you know what else we poke fun at? Music videos. Them shits have sins too, trust me. And we're more than willing to point the counter at the Tay Tays, the Beavers, the Billies, and many more. Check out Music Video Sins today. Look at that side boob. This is my neighborhood. This is my street. What do you play? Wow, um, Zelda, Tetris. That's kind of a big question. My name is Bert Macklin. Yeah. I'm with the FBI. Who is this? Mm, who are you trying to reach? What number is this? What number are you trying to reach? I don't know. Well, I think you have the wrong number. Do I? It happens. Take it easy. Six years ago, I came across a kid in a practice room working on his scales. He was early second year, and he'd started at Schaefer with a lot of hope. Friends! Rodents! Quadrupeds! Lend me your ears! Goddamn time traveling robots covering up their goddamn tracks. I tried to tear it from the side. I can't get a good grip here. You gotta do it like a bag of chips. No. Well, it's not just because he was like brutally murdered and stuff. Don't say and stuff. Take them to the posse. Look at me. You have your mother's eyes. 